Oh yes. And and, and this is the first this this Corona. And this joke. Oh, oh, oh you got that I ran, I ran down from the balcony. From the balcony, and I said, Spike, only a sharpest guy in the world can spot this. <laughs> and I know you ain't never think about death, but this corona made it too real. Yes. And and, and I have to say this. This president is responsible. For many of these people, we did not have the numbers. They did not have to die. And, and as you know, Joe, we got hit hard in the, in the brown and black communities. Now, we, in the wicked, in the wicked sense, in, Spike, Go ahead. In, a, in a conspiracy theory, wouldn't this be the ultimate disease that somebody would want to make? We kills brown and black people, kills old people, kills people with underlying Everybody who causes the government money gets wiped out on this shit right here. Hey, I would not, I would not. Hey, we heard, we saw what happened with Tuskegee experiment. And so, and what they've done to African-American women and, and, and brown women too, you know, with their making them, you know, so they can't have pregnancies. So this stuff, has, this country has a history of doing this. Giving our Native American brothers and sisters blankets with small Now there is a history. Oh shit, Spike. <laughs> oh shit, IG trying to do it to us again, man. Spike Lee, come back. Nah, man. Yeah, every time we talk some real shit. They get, they get my voice, they get my guests off. Every time we talk some real stuff, they get my, they get my guys off. Spike, I'm waiting on you to request again. We'll keep going. This is the big, 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 biggest show in the game. saw that shit. He'll be back. Oh no, he'd be right back. He'd be right back. Hey y'all, uh, Erica, they always do this to me when I got the real ones on. When I got the real ones on, this ain't nothing new. They don't even get me upset no more. Hey! TV tonight at 10 o'clock. Hey yo, Spike. Yo, Let that was some shenanigans. Some, some skullduggery. <laughs> yo, Spike. Some subterfuge. <laughs> That's the three S's. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Skullduggery, subterfuge, shenanigans. What? I got I got that word skullduggery for Mike Tyson. <laughs> skullduggery for Mike Tyson. Yo, let me tell you. Skullduggery. <laughs> Yo, Yo where are you, Miami? No, no, I'm in, uh, I'm in uh, uh, Turks and Caicos. Shout out to A-Rod. A Rod, J Lo, they are, they tuned in. Hey y'all, Spike, they can't stop us. The biggest in the game is tuned in, man. So you're you're on a birthday vacation? I'm on a birthday vacation. My brother DJ Khaled and his wife brought me and my family down here because I turned fifty. We threw the biggest party in the world. Fifty F F and that's fifty. That's F I D D Y. <laughs> that's fifty. 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 Hey, hey, that's fifty. Shout out to A Rod. Yo, my brother, yo, Spike, I love you so much. I love Spike. you. Cheers. Joe. Let me lighten it up. Let me yo, 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 up. Hit the, yo, we got to do another movie, baby. You ready? I've been ready, Spike. Well, there was a pandemic. I got you, though. I got you. <laughs> yo, you got my role for me already, right? Got it. Spike, I've been seeing, um, well, let's lighten the situation. Baby. We can do it. Let's you're, lighten you're, it up. You're the commander. Just tell me what to do. Let's lighten it up because they're getting scared of us. Instagram. Did Knicks get the eighth pick? <laughs> Yo, Spike. Yo, we can't catch a break. I need you. This is a Jopra moment. We call this Jopra, like a Jopra Winfrey. This is the Jopra moment. What A-Rod said, put me in one of those videos. All right, A-Rod. I'll put you on the show. 
So I go like, this is a joke for a moment. And I need you to be honest to Joe. Will me and you in our lifetime ever see a great Knicks team? I'm praying. Can I get in my knees right now? Y'all, 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 listen, y'all, 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 let me tell you something, let me tell you something, Spike, you got every excuse, they threw you out the garden, they, 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 they not winning, you from, you are Mr. Brooklyn, Planet Brooklyn, you got Kyrie, you got Kevin Durant, Brooklyn Nets, I know they've been... The, Bar the, the Barkley Center is four blocks away from the world headquarters of 40 acres and a mule in Fort Green, BK. <laughs> right. Can't do it. Can't do it, Spike? Can't do it. Loyal to the soil. Orange and blue, baby. Yo, Spike, you give me hope, man. You give me hope because these Brooklyn I like Nets, I like Coach Tim's though. We got a coach now. We got a coach. I mean, I want to know why you think that's not Mike Mark Jackson's job. You know what? I still have not come why he can't get a job. I don't understand it. He definitely deserves a job. A Rod is saying, leave the Yankees, come to the Mets. Yeah, your man A Rod. <laughs> Yeah, A Rod in these comments, orange and blue. Let's go, Max. Yo, your <laughs> man A Rod, he trying to solicit hey, us right now. Tell A Rod, Spike says, you and Miss J Lo buy the team first. <laughs> you get a -R, a -R, first steps first. You and Miss J Lo buy the team. We, well, I don't. I, I'm not leaving my Yankees though, man. I not love not my enough. brother A Rod and my sister J Lo. I'm not leaving. I'm not. I'm not leaving my my Yankees. I'm not. I grew up five blocks from Yankee Stadium. I'm not doing that. I'm not. Why are we, why are we so two years in a row, man? Every player is on the, on the injured reserve. Goddamn. Yeah, well, you know, uh, yeah, A-Rod said we're going to convert you. Y'all, y'all saw, y'all A-Rod in this motherfucker, huh? Y'all A-Rod. Let me tell you, hey, hey yo, yo, Spike, give us a list of names of people you have discovered or you worked with them early in, in their careers this went on to be giants. All right. Do the Right Thing was Rosie Perez's first film. Martin Lawrence's first film. Jungle Feet was Halle Berry's first film. Clock was Mackay Piper's first film. Oh, do the right thing. Also, Robin Harris's first film, Sweet Ooh. Dick Willie, and uh, just a bunch of. Uh, Anybody got a Sweet Dick Willie in their hood or their family? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, your man Dion Cole came on yesterday. I said, "Y'all, Dion, I might be older than you, but you look like everybody's uncle. Like <laughs> Dion Cole looked like everybody's uncle." So I know Samuel Jackson. Well, said that was Sam's first film, but he's been several. And I've been honored and blessed to be in four films with Denzel, Mo Better Blues, Malcolm X, He I Game, and Inside Man. And then his son was the star of Black Klansman. You thought you was going to win some shit with Denzel, fucked around, his son came through, and you <laughs> want some shit. <laughs> no, you, des you deserved it, Spike. Thank you. You beyond deserved it. Everybody knows that. But um, Malcolm X, did you ever see this Netflix documentary of who killed Malcolm X? Yeah. And so when you looked at this, and it was so informative, and you look at your movie you made, because I did the first thing I did when I finished that, I went to the Malcolm X movie. Right. And was there details in the movie that you left out? No, I think that First of all, the, the movie was based upon the autobiography of Malcolm X as told to Alex Haley. So we went, 
you know, stuff was in the book. And, I, and, and many, that film came out in 92. So a lot of stuff has been revealed since the movie came out. But I will say this. If, if, if people fast forward to the end credits of Malcolm X, we name the assassins. We had the real names of the assassins that came from the mosque in New Jersey. In Newark, New Jersey. Did you so when you're looking at the documentary, right? And then it's like Malcolm Malcolm started to like like really go bad on on the nation. Like it was like Yeah, he had a falling out with the, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and he chose to leave the nation of Islam and pursue and just going to straight up Islam. And that was his demise. I like to say this though. Malcolm's wife, widow, when I met her, the great, late great Dr. Betty Shabazz, she told me, Joe, she told me personally that she felt that Malcolm, her husband, knew he was going to be assassinated, went to the Audubon Ballroom that Sunday afternoon. And that is why I chose to use that double dolly shot when he was floating. Yeah. When the lady told him, I'm going to pray yeah, for you. Yeah, we had a great song. One of the great protest songs ever by Sam Cooke. A change is going to come. Change is going to come. Yeah. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah. And yeah. he's floating. That's that signature Spike Lee move. And, and that's why I did that shot because I wanted to convey to the audience the mindset that Malcolm knew because. Betty, his wife, Betty Shabazz, that she told me she knew in her heart that he knew he was, he was going to that he knew he was going to be assassinated that day, and he would be a martyr. Well, that's according why to chose, your movie, I believe that. That's why I chose that shot. According, Kenny Sway, you got to come after Spike and sing this song for me. But listen, uh, you know we got our honorary singers. This shit like the David Letterman or some shit. Our yeah, senior yeah. old, my man Kenny Sway. He come on and he'll he gonna sing change gonna come. Okay, <laughs> this is shit we doing in here, Spike. So I go, so he goes right. So I look at the 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 documentary, and I say, how did this one man that worked on a tour bus on a tour bus in D.C. woke up one day and said, I'm gonna find out who killed Malcolm X. And he went and looked up everything and literally found who killed Malcolm X. But I think that, as I said before, we, I knew who did it. We had the, the, we had the names of the, the assassins in the end credits of the film. So it's, it's long been known who the guys were. Big, 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 big. Uh, but here's, oh, oh, Joe, Joe, let me tell you this, though. As you know, because you were a guest, every year we've done a Michael Jackson block. Did you have fun you went to at the block party? The best in the world, and you got the Prince one. Right. Well, this, Joe, this Saturday is Michael Jackson's birthday. And we're having a virtual Michael Jackson block party that I'm hosting with DJ Spinner. Oh, my God. And how, how do people get on that? All right. Let me tell you. It's going to be this Saturday, Michael's Born Day, from 12 noon to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Michael's YouTube channel. YouTube. So, I mean, www.youtube.com slash Michael Jackson. YouTube, www slash Michael Jackson. Yeah. Oh, I'm in there. Now, can you, I don't, I don't want, like, can you just tell your audience what it's like to go to one of my block parties, the Michael Jackson block party, the Prince block party? First of all, it's the biggest movie I've ever seen in my life. They come out there, everywhere you look, there's a star, somebody, but it's like, uh, it's like, Everybody Spike ever worked with 
comes to, it's like a family reunion. For every, you look into the side, everybody you ever seen in a Spike Lee movie is in that motherfucker, man. <laughs> hey, yo, Spike, let me tell you something. There's always been a rumor in the hood that he got game is based on Stephon Marbury. Not true. Not even close. Not even close. The, 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 the thing that people get tripped on is that I chose Abraham Lincoln as a high school. But the uh -oh. reason I did that is because Abraham Lincoln, for years, was the powerhouse basketball Best team in New York. In the public school, uh, you know, PSL. So that's why I chose it. But, but and I understand that, that, you know, Stefan, you know, felt like that. But me and Stefan were cool. You know, his documentary, they asked to have clips from He Got Game. I let them have it. It's all love. All love. I'm on the documentary. Yo, yo. Let me, let me ask you a question, right? Oh, one other thing. Uh, people, last night I saw a great documentary. It's on HBO. It's called Storm Over Brooklyn, of the Yusuf Hawkins story. That shit is people. I'm not going to steer you wrong. HBO is called, it's on HBO, Storm Over Brooklyn. I've been hearing about this. About the murder of Yusef Hawkins. Please watch. Remember Yusef Hawkins when you walk in. Yes. Uh, Spike. HBO, watch it. I never forget Yusef Hawkins. You know, Lisa Evans, our sister, she does Street Soldiers. Right. What, like last year, she set up a thing with the police commissioner in New York. And it was in the police headquarters. And I came. I was a guest. Town Hall. And the police commissioner speaks, and this, and they said, "Well, Joe, what the police department mean to you?" I said, first thing I said is, "I remember Yusuf Hawkins when I'm walking." Oh, you know I remember that? I'm a do Diallo. I, I, I go, and they knew at that point. Eleanor, oh, no. Bump, Eleanor Bumpers. Eleanor Bumpers. They knew. Oh no, 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 no. We we, we might have chosen the wrong one. We might we we might have chose. The Admiral Weimer, Sean Bell, Eric Garner. Yeah. And so you, you can't do the shit to me. Like, I don't go for that shit. Like, like you can't. Joe, you don't want you don't go okie doke. <laughs> nah, not me, not me. No okie doke. Let me ask you a question. Just me, a personal question, Spike. You sh you shoot movies from a New York's perspective. It's always consciousness. It's always something to something. Would you ever shoot a gangster movie about a gangster from New York? Say the question again. You always shoot movies based out of New York. Right, right. Consciousness, pro-black, whatever, with a big meeting. Would you ever shoot, like imagine Spike Lee shot American Gangster with Denzel? I could do that. Like, I mean, if, if you look would at Would you the, ever shoot a gangster movie? A gangster I think, movie I think, based? But, uh, did you ever see the film Clockers? I seen Clockers, but I'm Delroy was Delroy wasn't a gangster? Come on, no. No, that was a real gangster. Because you know you done fucked up, right? But I'm not talking about that. <laughs> I'm talking about based on one of these figures. All right. I'm asking, what movie would you do if you did uh, 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 based on a gangster in New York City? I would have to think about that. But I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm open to that. But here's the thing, though. If I did it, Joe, I would. I cannot glamorize. I know, I we get it. Glamorize that. I we get to, it. I, would have I know that in the Spike Lee way, you will show the horrors of the heroin yeah. You show the horrors of babies being pulled from families. Like, that, that's what I mean. Like, we, Yeah, I can do that. We, Joe, no, we got to get one. That. But, I'm not, I, but I, I, would be, I would not be, I cannot live myself if I'm glamorizing a lifestyle that is not progressive who we need to be, especially at this time. But I'm, 
I can tell that story. Mike, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you do it in your spite league. Yeah, way. I'm open to that. I Joe would love to see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Now, everybody, let me tell you a funny story. So Spike, he comes and he says, Joe, so I try out for the, oh, uh, she's got to have it. I make it. I, I went all out. God is great, Spike, because people don't know I know Spike for years and I've been telling Spike, Spike, save my life. Put me in movies, please. Save my life, Spike. So one day they stick us on the JetBlue flight, the Mint. L L JFK to LAX. JFK to LAX. Side by side. I'm thinking we sleeping. He's in a. I'm because, in a because, it, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's a six o'clock flight. So we're, we're, uh, we're happy to, to be sitting each other. But it's like 6 a.m. We're going to sleep. And then maybe say, you know, we'll say, what's up? At the, we wake up. We'll land LAX. Me and you talked nonstop from takeoff to landing. JFK to LAX. Let me tell you something, Spike. Spike's first question was like this. Look, and it came, it came from the side. <laughs> he said, Joe, tell me about cracking the 80s in the Bronx. <laughs> and you had this dead eye looking at me. <laughs> and I was like, yo, Spike, it wasn't no different in Brooklyn. People were selling their TVs. People were this and that. And we went on for six hours straight. Coastal, JFK to LAX, nonstop. And, and you said, you call me the next day, and you said, no, you call me a couple of days later. You said, Joe, when you coming to LA? I said, why? You said, I got a role for you. When he win, I want you to try out. Flew to LA. No, you, no, 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 no. You, you, you didn't, you, you, was, you were there. You didn't, you didn't leave New York. No, I left. I left LA. I left LA. You sure? I remember because hey. I was practicing the script on the whole flight back to LA. Oh, okay, my so bad. I went back. Okay. The point is, I went all out, and you just said, "Yo, Joe, just be you. Don't worry. Do your thing." And I go up in there. I'm a little intimidated, but I try. Thank God we did great. What I want to Kim talk Coleman about, was a casting director. Who? Kim Coleman. Kim Coleman was looking at Spike like, you full of shit, get Fat Joe the fuck out of here. Like, like, I've been, she was like, I know lean back, but get this motherfucker out of here. And he was like, Joe, just do your thing. And thank God I did my thing. I got you the part. That's not the part I'm talking about. You did it. Spike Lee is so positive, so conscious. When I get to the set, you bring out a couple of ladies and all that. I don't know what the talk was about before I was in there. And he said, Joe, could you tell them how you got the name Joey Crack? <laughs> so I'm thinking they were selling you, Spike. He's a crack dealer, former this, this, that. Why are you fucking with this guy? Like, so Spike said, can you tell them how you got the name Joey Crack? And I told the lady, I said, no disrespect. But when I was little, I was always fat. The teacher would tell me to write my write something on the board. And every time I got up, my pants were sagging, the crack of my ass was show. And so the girls who sit behind me would call me Joey Crack. Before and crack. Before the drug crack. That's <laughs> right. When I said that, I seen the whole room of your conscious sisters take a deep breath in and go. <laughs> okay, Spike. Okay. We're going to work with Fat Joe the Gangster. I get it, Spike. Okay. Okay. That was a moment. That was a moment. Let me ask you something, Spike. Before you say that, before you say that, I like to tell people that you did not get the part because, you know, uh-uh. You earned that part. You are... A very good actor. And, and Joe, you were serious as a heart attack. That's you right. came to that on time. You learned, you knew your lines. I mean, and then you could ad lib. It was time to ad lib. You did 
the motherfucking bank. So thank you. And we're going to be working again in the future. You told me my role, though. You told me my role. And I think it might be my role in life. Uh, uh, I've been out here in Church and Kato's. I've been feeling very spiritual. The water's like Listerine blue. Right. And keep it to yourself. But that role you got for me in that movie, that might be my future role in life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm saying to you. I'm the low low. I'm telling you. I'm the QT. On the QT. <laughs> Yo, let me ask you something. Tell me the story really quick. I know you. I ask you this all the time, but how did you meet Rosie Perez? All right. I like to say that Rosie has her own version and not going to dispute it. I'm going to give my version. That's right. At the time, School Days was out, a big, big hit. And the group EU had the song, The Butt. Doing The Butt. Yeah. So I had a birthday party in L.A. at a club no longer there called Funky Reggae. <laughs> and you was playing the butt and people going crazy. And and I see this woman dancing on top of her speaker. I mean, she could dance, but one misstep, she's going to fall, break her neck, and I'm going to be sued. So I tell security to please have this young woman, have her please come down from the speaker. So they asked her came down, and Rosie came down, and then she cursed me out. And I never heard a voice like that ever. So I said, where are you from? She said, New York. I said, where in New York? She said, Brooklyn. I said, where in Brooklyn? She said, Fort Greene. I said, Fort Greene? <laughs> the LA. Fort and right away, at the time, I was right, even though it was a party, you know, during uh, school days, I was still writing the next film, Do the Right Thing. And at that moment, I knew Mookie's girlfriend was going to be Puerto Rican. Because as you know, but we was, you know, the brothers, sisters, we're the same thing. And I like to say, though, and, and I'm not trying to start no shit, but the relationship between Latinos in L.A. and the West Coast and black folks is not the same it is in New York. You know? <laughs> I mean, could you elaborate on that, Spike? Because they, they think I'm crazy sometimes. Like, Elaborate on the Latino, the Puerto Rican, Dominican experience. Because in New York, in the Bronx, in Brooklyn, in Queens, Manhattan, we grew up together. People understand this. Hip-hop was created by Puerto Rican brothers and sisters, black brothers and sisters in the Bronx. Black people and Puerto Ricans created one of the great art forms ever. Together. That's a fact. Under motherfucking disputed. Black and Puerto Rican curated hip hop. Right. We have a scene and she's got to have it where you go to Loisa in Puerto Rico. Yeah. And you show the dark skinned Puerto Ricans and the spiritual, how they celebrate with, they're from Africa. Yes. You know, when I say this shit, Spike, I got green eyes and I'm white. They look at me like I'm fucking crazy. When I tell them that slavery, tobacco, sugar was in the Caribbean, Cuba, I even my it was Cuba, me. Jamaica, Puerto Rico. It's 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 we all the slaves went to the Caribbean, then they then they went to Af they went to the United States of America. They were all from Mother Africa. And we play drums like the motherfucker. <laughs> that drum is Mother Africa. Yo, Spike. Salsa. Jazz. Spike, I, got, I, got, I got. That drums is African. 
That's what I say. They think I'm crazy, Spike. They're I crazy. Shit. It goes viral. They looking at me like I'm a lunatic. I'm like, yo, all the music is African. The 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 hip hop is African. The funky Brazilian music is African. The tembo and all the drums is Stop African. Stop. Merengue. I don't know what's wrong with these people, man. Yo, Spike, let me ask you a question, Spike. Last one, and I appreciate your time. You got to tell Yo, you got to have me on again, start. baby. This can't Yo. be one and done. <laughs> I can't wait, Spike. Spike, I'm going to give you the option. Not considering yourself, your top five movie directors or your top five rappers of all time, dead or alive. Let me let me do the movies. <laughs> Top five directors. Hold up, before you go to director, is Public Enemy your favorite hip hop group of all time? Yes, and, and, and look, I'm biased, but I like to say this: that not it's not me, but people, other people, not me, have said that that fight the power. Is the greatest hip hop song of all time. It could be one. Of, it's one of the great protest songs. And do the right thing came out in the summer of 1989. Another summer of funky drummer. Hell this to song, the funky drummer. Excuse me. This Brothers song. They shot. Song right, fight the they power. They shot right in front of the ballroom when Malcolm X got shot. Yes, the song fight the power and the movie do the right thing are still relevant. 31 years later, like the shit came out yesterday. That's a fact. Still relevant. And I don't want to tell you about when you transition and you go on from Earth. But Spike, you here forever, brother. Thank you. You in Hall of you Fame, too, baby. museums. And I'm with, and, and listen, listen to this, though. Me and you could be hanging out on the other side, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But ain't going to be no time soon, though. No, no, no time, time soon. soon. No, I'm very healthy. I'm very healthy. Give me the five directors. Five directors. All right. Not in particular order. School, Martin Scorsese. Japanese director Kira, uh, Kira Kurosawa. Italian director uh, Fellini. Uh... That's three. I'm getting in trouble leaving some people out. Uh, Il Kazan. And I got to put in uh, for five, I'm going to split it. Spielberg and Francis Ford Coppola. Woo! Woo! No particular order. Spike, let me explain something to you. I want you to do a gangster movie based out of one of these guys in New York and show the horror. Show the, you know, I was talking to one of my best friends today, not even my best friends, my brother. And he was telling me about, could I talk about what we talked about in the poll? He was talking to me about that his father at one time smoked, his father used to smoke crack at one time. He beat it, eventually became a beautiful man, whatever. So when I try to tell him, because I'm a little older than him, I said, yo, that's not even your father's fault. And what I was breaking down to him is that Richard Pryor, people were duped into smoking crack. People were smoking rollers. The, all the fly guys I knew that was getting money, Bank Robin, the number man, the all these guys, all these guys were socially smoking crack in weed, and then it turned into free base and crack and all that. And before they realized, it went from the fly drug that you could smoke in Studio 54 to like, holy shit, I'm caught up in this shit. And I was telling them about a lady. There was a lady in my building. She was one of the most beautiful women I ever seen in my life. And I don't know what the fuck this lady was doing in my projects. Because for one, she was way too classy to be there. She, 
I, I swear to God, I tell him, I think she was a basketball player's wife at one time, broke up with something, because the, my building was definitely a pit stop. It wasn't for life for this woman, because she was just too classy, too fly, too beautiful. And one day, she smoked that shit. And guys, you know, paying, giving a crack, having sex with her, this woman died. And and I just think it was a it it, it just caught everybody and nobody knew it was there no, was no uh, surgeon no, general and, 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 and I'd like to give a shout out to John Singleton who did the late great John Singleton, my dear brother, died way too young, who did the you know show Snowflake. It it, it is documented that it was not an accident that crack was introduced to black and brown communities. You know, that's that's not a, you know, some type of news. But, Joe, you're right. I mean, in a, in a little, in a, in a little bit, in a little what you're saying, though, know, we we cover that a little bit with the character that Halle Berry played in Jungle Fever, the three dollar crack hole. And let me, and your funny thing, though, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to make it funny, but. Hallie had to come back five times audition. Cause I I just said, you know, she's just too fine to be a crackhead. Yeah. And so the fifth time she came back dressed as I mean, she came back like she was a three dollar crack hole. In fact, I didn't even know it was her. And that's wow. part. And another thing I did not know. When I cast Sam, like me and Sam, known a long, we knew each other a long time. Sam, I cast, I cast Sam in, in uh, school days in a famous Kentucky Fried Chicken scene. Uh, he's in Do the Right Thing, Mrs. Your Love Daddy. But when Sam, when I cast Sam in, in, in Jungle Fever, that role, Gator, oh my God. Gator was serious. I did not know Sam was coming out of rehab. Everybody knew, but I didn't know. And so while we were in rehearsals, Sam was taking Hallie to all his spots. His meetings so she could really study the role. He was taking Hallie to all his spots. And I didn't even, I didn't even know Sam was, you know, I didn't even know it. I didn't even know that. Right. So that, was a Jopra, that was a Jopra moment indirectly. That is a story we never knew. And I let mean, me tell you about Hallie, you she killed, I mean, that Sam is Gator. I mean, have you ever seen a, a better portrayal of a crackhead than what Sam did in Jungle Fever? No, no, no. Barry? Oh, my God. Now, that was amazing. And let me tell you something. My favorite Spike Lee moment is at Sal's. Where? Sal's. And they, they got no black people on the wall. <laughs> oh, do the right thing. Sal's famous pizzeria, Boycott Sal's. Spike, you know I love you. I worship you. You're my brother. You're my mentor, my big brother. I'm with you for life. Yeah. Whenever, tell your wife, I love her. I Same send here. my love, your whole family. Thank you for coming on. Hey, yo, Spike, do me a favor. I want you to go. This is the big, 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 biggest show in the game. Hello, this is Spike Lee, representing the People's Republic of Brooklyn, New York, Fort Greene. And this is the biggest, 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 biggest. Grande show in the game. Grande, put your grande. <laughs> I love you, Spike. Love you, baby. Thank you, my brother. All right. Oh, my God. And you don't know who I know. You don't know who I know. We the biggest in the game. The competition. Shout out Eric B. the Godfather of the show. 